It's happy hour again from Uptown New Orleans. Hello, I'm Grant Morris. Happy hour is part of the family of shows on the podcast network. It's neworleans.com. When you walk into a bar in New Orleans and you pull up a bar stool, you never know who's going to be sitting on either side of you. What you do know is no matter what they look like, what they're wearing, whether they just got out of a limousine or just got out of jail, they're going to be happy to talk to you. Because that's New Orleans and this is happy hour, a cocktail-fueled 60 minutes of random conversation with folks who have nothing in common. Other than we're all New Orleans in a bar today, we're at the fabulous Wayfair on Ferret Street where they have a happy hour here every day for four hours. From three to seven, we can get half price drinks and half price bar food, and they have an awesome brunch on the weekends, happy hour. And uh, Wayfair is just uh, on Ferret Street, just a couple of blocks down from Napoleon Avenue. And happy hour today is brought to us by Strategic Resumes. If you want to sharpen up your resume, your LinkedIn profile, or other job search skills, start at Strategic Resumes. And if you want to get away, on vacation, start your search at Travel Central and Metairie. Basic Swim and Gym, where you can get a full range of fashion swimsuits, which is right next to Basics underneath the lingerie store on Magazine Street. Hangover Destroyer is the only all-natural product medically proven to prevent a hangover. And thanks to the Positive Vibrations Foundation, who are creating and encouraging community through the development and preservation of arts, music, culture, and heritage. And who doesn't support that? And if you want to support us, you can go to patreon.com and search for It's New Orleans Happy Hour, and you too can be a member of our Happy Hour family for just $1 a month. And sorry to tell you, Andrew Duhon is not here today. Sad, right? (laughs) But you can buy his record or even steal it anywhere you steal music. It's called False River. It's an awesome record and highly recommended. And talking of music, look who's come back. It's Cole Williams. I'm back. Hey, Cole. Nice hey. to see you. How are you? Oh, my God. I'm it's great. A leading question. Now, can any of the I'm other the guys dogs. around this table smell Cole? Is it just me? Uh, yeah, yes, I can. You smell awesome. Come. What is the smell? Yes. This is it's chef. like cocoa butter or something. Cocoa like that. butter. Everybody has something different. I Everybody said it was says something different. Yeah. Danita, what do you think it is? Can you smell it? For it's my it? oils. It's oil. It's a special. It's a special. I think I'll have to get closer to her. <laughs> Come over and it's have a special a, combination. Over and have a, whip. a lady never tells you. Can take your headphones off if you want for a minute. Oh, right. It's worth it. I would like to know what you. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's getting real. Yeah. <laughs> See what you think. And if five minutes have not passed. I, I love the direction <laughs> the show's going. Already. <laughs> We're playing a game today what called "What Do like? I Smell Like." I smell delicious. 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 Look at that. You, you two look like a good couple as well. <laughs> so Don't you think? Look at that. Beautiful. Ah, oh, she. Isn't, she does hair. Like she's, I know. She's Danita, amazing hair. D- and Miller. I aspire to like. Danita, am I calling you Danita Miller or Danita Sather or well, Sather or what is it? Actually, uh, Miller was my maiden name. Yeah. Mm. Miller makes it right. It's Miller but time. It's Miller Doesn't make time. it wrong. Miller the high life. Um, okay. But I go by Sather because my children's last name is Sather. You change your name for your children? Well, that was their was father's name. Was that their father's name. name? Are you still married to him? No. Oh, so so should I go back to Miller? I, what, what do you... What do you think? Hmm. My mother kept her last name. Danita Miller. She kept her married last name. I like Danita Miller as That's a name. I would keep what? the... But actually, I kind of like your your. I like Danita that. Danita yeah, I like that Sather. No, you I do? don't like Sather. Yes. Okay. Hey, Chef Marlon Alexander is here. Chef, how's yes. it going? Uh, hello, everything's going great. I, I I'm honored, and thank you for inviting me. Not at all. I see you took your hat off. I took my hat off at the yes. end of the day. Okay, all right. Hair. I'm, a, I'm a big I'm a big hat guy. I, I, it's <laughs> yeah. look, It looks good on you. That people hat. probably you think I'm bald. I don't know. Where, Where do you buy hats? hats? Yes. Uh, what's it called? Gordon's. Yes. Oh, but, but, Gordon's is Gordon's. awesome. Right. Yes. But I mean, to be honest with you, when, when I travel around, I'll buy a hat like in the most random spot. So if it looks good, I'll take it. Okay. Where have you been recently where you bought a hat? Uh, Portugal. Oh, Portugal. Yeah. Well, that's impressive. So, fancy. yeah, I mean, I. Yeah, fancy. Yeah. <laughs> Believe me, I haven't paid for any trips in a very long time. Did you bring us back anything from Portugal? Uh, uh, I brought a lot of uh, port wine, mm-hmm. and um, oddly enough, I went to this great bar there called um, uh, The Bedroom, and it was owned by John <laughs> Malkovich. <laughs> and I worked with him. He's there, awesome. There were Hang beds. On. John Malkovich owns a bar in Portugal, in, Portugal. in Lisbon. In Lisbon. Called the bedroom. Right by the water. Okay, well, they've got another And hour. it's called the bedroom. Right. And it's beds that are covered in plastic. And it's everywhere around. That's what you sit on. You sit on a bed covered in plastic. I've been many places. I wasn't sure what was going on That's there. It's like your grandmother's couch. Right. Like yeah, right. The furniture. Are you supposed to have <laughs> sex on it? Uh, you know, I'm sure it's don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> what, what's the last thing? What's yeah, the yeah, lighting right. like oh in there? God. Is it bright light? It's well, no. It's actually like candles everywhere, randomly placed around. So it's uh, very, it's it's very relaxing, soothing. Dirty. Why would you? 
cover it with plastic unless you expect him to get oh my God. bodily fluids on it. That would, did you have a good would, time there? Yeah, yeah. What uh, made you think of that when I said, did you bring anything back? Did you catch something? No. <laughs> Thank God, no. But, All right. but yeah, it was a great time. <laughs> they would probably use plastic to cover everything. You you know. with everything. Yeah. Don't, you don't know. touch anything. So, okay. So, what? What, uh, what is John Malkovich? So, you worked with John Malkovich. I have. What yes. did you work on? It was a little show called Supercon, and it was supposed to be a comedy about um, Comic Con. Oh, ah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a good idea for mm-hmm. a comedy. Actually, and, and, was he any uh, good in it? I, yes, he was probably the best thing in it. You know, he's Listen. really, um, he's a very sophisticated person. Right. I wouldn't think yes. he would do some sort of dopey comedy. I know. I was wondering myself. Yeah. But he was good. <laughs> but he was good. So and he, he allowed me to put a toupee on him because he shaves his head. So you're the hair and makeup person. I'm the hair person. Right. And I Not makeup. kept a toupee on him. He shaves his head. Wow. So people What's put a toupee pay on. What's so you're saying he shaves his head so people put up two pay no, on? No, he shaves his head because he likes to he's very handsome with a shaved head. <laughs> what are you suggesting? What's the well, hair that he's really, oh, hair oh. Is, <laughs> right? Ooh, wow. That's the two pay right there. So that's it? Down the oh photo. my god. Wow. How'd you get that so fast? Wow. He's looking a lot older than I wow. remember. Yes. <laughs> Especially with that toupee. Right. Funny. Mm-hmm. He looks better without it. <laughs> and it was kind I of a so. pink hair color, you know, it was kind of like the strawberry. Pink so hair and makeup blonde. is not necessarily together on a movie. Uh, well, it's, um, it's, it's not because of our union situations. Uh, I'm part of 798 IATSE. And um, it's, it's your either hair or your makeup. And I had to make that decision. When I joined the union in 2004. Which one did you go with? Hair, obviously. I went with hair. And could you have just as easily been a makeup artist? Yes, Are I could Are you qualified have. to do that? I am qualified. <laughs> How I did you did make it for that 15 decision? years. I did it because there were less hairdressers than there were makeup artists, so that meant yeah. I'd be in more demand. Smart. Oh. Yeah. So you weren't following like your picking. heart so much as following the money. I love doing both. <laughs> okay. I love doing both, but you're not allowed to here. Do you regret... Every day that now you're not doing makeup. Not at some... all. I still get to do makeup. I go on. I do commercials, and you can do both. Oh, so there's no union for commercials? Not really. Well, not one that it? they is don't that enforce. Hmm? Is that after or no? No, IATSE. IATSE. Okay. After is for actors. Uh, oh. Now, that. what about you, Chef Marlon? Are you the, a member of a union? Uh, is there a yes. chef un- association? There, there, there is a chef association, and I'm a member of that. Private chefs also. I mean, I just uh, I just moved here um, in February, one day before Mardi Gras this year. Oh my God. So cool. I, I've been what? working, working, working because uh, I've got all this information about you here, and I was that was going to be a question I was going to ask you. So you know, I might as well ask you right now. Why the hell did you move here? Of all these exotic so, places you've lived and a, things you've I'm done. Originally from California. Uh, well, sorry. That's a lie. I'm originally from Indianapolis, Indiana, and okay. I moved to California when I was uh, very young. So uh, I consider myself like, like a, I'm, an, I'm a Californian, you know, Long Beach, California, right. I grew up. Uh, but when I was working for a hedge fund owner in Greenwich, Connecticut. As a chef, as hey, a private hey, chef. Uh, yes, as a private chef. Um, so I was there for four years. I didn't want to go back to California. Uh, and so I came down here for a bachelor party. <laughs> so basically, it's one night in New Orleans. Are you single? I am. Well, no, I'm seeing someone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking. Was that someone who popped out of the cake at the Re- bachelor party? Recently divorced <sighs> and seeing someone. Yes. So, uh, okay. Life is good. Ah. <laughs> but if you look at this list of exotic, incredible, interesting people you've worked for. Yeah, I want to hear. Should we should I run good. through the whole thing? Th- through the resume? Go for it. I mean, have you really w- cooked for Stevie Wonder? Yes. Kiss? Yes. Eddie Murphy? Yes. Will and Jada Pinkett Smith? Yes. Christina Aguilera? Yes. And it goes on and on. No, 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 no. Fav- fav- uh, favorite person who you actually sound like that I'm shocked you didn't mention, Rod Stewart, who would sing for me <gasps> as I made him lunch before he hopped on the plane to go to Vegas to perform. He would sing to me at the island. So it's like he had everywhere to, to be in this house, this big, beautiful house in uh, Beverly Hills. But he would hang out in the kitchen and, like, talk to me and sing. Wow. Can you? So and he so paid me special. at that. That's even <laughs> better. I know, right? You're a shift to the stars right. here, which must mean that people who can hire anyone 
decided to hire you. So you must be a pretty good chef. So I, I do a lot with nutrition. So um, I'm very like healthy, uh, or all everything's you always look healthy. Always, uh, yeah. Wouldn't you say <laughs> everything's Ladies? always. Pretty Everything's nice. always <laughs> organic, uh, but yeah. So it's you know um, I help people you know with body image. So I worked uh, a year with Christina Aguilera. I She's helped her. Got a bad I helped her lose. Image. I helped her lose that thirty six pounds, and it was not easy. Oh my Love god! Love you, Christina. Uh, I need to lose yeah. thirty six pounds. Do you? Uh, everybody. Wants. But she was working out I'm too. I'm bringing right? receipts. No. <laughs> she was working out too, though, right? <gasps> Did you put her on the master cleanse? Because that's well, what they you, do when they want to get into that know, dress really you quickly. Oh yeah, uh, done master it. cleanse it's great. is great, with, but with a lot of range. times, a lot of times it's just you know you have to really grains and all these things like no starch, mm -hmm. no bread, yeah. that, those kinds of things. I'm gluten free. No bread. I have a gluten allergy. I'm, but yeah. Yeah. I'm gluten free too, but I still eat tons of gluten free bread. See, that, you, <laughs> see, you, there's more chemicals in like the gluten free stuff. Like you have to, I, right. you have to read the labels. It's like <sighs> piles and piles of like. All this other stuff. Right. I didn't realize. I took advantage of like being gluten free to just like not have that starch mm. because like I love sugar, so like I'll get it in I my love alcohol. Sugar too. So then it's like I just didn't want like the double sugar with like right. the breads and then the, the sugar. If you See. drink tangerine and tonic, cut down on the tonic. <laughs> the, the gin's fine. So you decided <laughs> to keep drinking booze but cut out bread. I think I'm yeah, good you, cool. it's, it's about so balance. I, see, I can see why you moved to New Orleans as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't I fit right in? So you moved My mother, she called me like a bibber. Like in Jamaica, they, they call you like a wine bibber. Like if you love bibber. alcohol, bibber. I don't know. I, I don't know. Like where imbibing? I'm, I'm a bibber. I don't know. But like I've always liked the taste of alcohol. Like I had my Who first doesn't? Guinness. I tasted it when I was like 12. You know, it's, I don't know. Where did you grow it's up in exciting. Jamaica or in Brooklyn? I grew up in Brooklyn, but in the Caribbean neighborhood. So I'm first generation American. So my so mom is mom, from Jamaica. Right. She came here, met my father, married him, had me. Okay. And then poof. You had brothers and sisters? Nope. That's it. You were it's the only me. thing they ever got around to doing. Oh, I was an only child too. Really? Mm -hmm. Did you, you like it? Are you still an only child? Uh, actually, I am. Do you like it? I'm an orphan. <laughs> only child. <laughs> okay. So how many kids do you have? I have two. And, where are and they? that was important to me. Yeah. One right. is here, and the other one is in New York, Brooklyn. And Brooklyn. what are they? What are they doing? And they're in Brooklyn. Yeah, so Brooklyn. we should have switched. Um, my son just moved. Uh, he was in Prospect Park. Yeah. Oh, then I love he, that area. Yeah, really nice. And but now he's in another, and I can't quite remember. Oh wait, Williamsburg, Bushwick, Bed -Stuy. Bushwick. He's in Ooh. Bushwick. Bushwick used Bushwick. to be like the place you wouldn't want to exactly. live under any right, circumstances. Right, but now it's now so it's cool. cool. They have all those murals everywhere. Very Do they? cool. I haven't been there in a while. That's oh, so cool. I was there last year. Wow. It's changed, actually. Everybody's <laughs> getting it's priced changed. out. Isn't people getting priced out of there by now, though? Yeah, yeah. it's starting to be. Did My mom get... still has a place there. Unless she still has her house right. in East Flatbush. But, yeah, it's uh -huh. totally expensive. Yeah. It's just too this expensive. Is... It's like if you know what you used to pay for rent, why would you pay more? Right. When well, you knew that well, you paid at less. At this point, right. Brownstone in Harlem is going for millions of dollars. Right. So, yeah. So, where so it's, a, it's a hipster mm -hmm. overtake. Right. Yeah. Well, Marlon, where are you living here? <laughs> Have you bought some sort of hipster joint? Not yet. Um, so I just opened up. We have uh, a catering company, Manger. We have Poulet, which is a, like a healthier concept. Uh, rotisserie chicken, so sandwiches and wraps and all those good things. And now Crew, which is my raw bar. So Jeez, you got a lot going on for I, six I, I'm, months or whatever. I'm not home much. He's not from here. I'm not home much. <laughs> and uh, I'm actually contemplating uh, expanding Crew to uh, North Carolina. Okay. Well, let's wow. go through these one at a time. Crew is spelled C-R-U, I assume. C-R-U. Okay. Uh, Nola.com. Crew Nola. Okay, how come uh, I don't have I, any I gotta, of this I, I give plugs whenever I can. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah. Well, CRU. It's good, it's good to know. If it's a, Nola .com, .com. Uh, and then Poulet. Uh, how do you spell that? Sorry, P O U L E T. So that's French for chicken. Right, exactly. And then Crew is raw, raw fish. I assume. Exactly, so it's a raw bar. So you've got fish and chicken taken care of. When right. What's the other so, one? Manger. Uh, manger. It's um, more of a general. Exactly. But we don't eat raw chicken. But, but, but well, <laughs> we don't do raw chicken, but we also don't overcook the chicken. Don't we? Right on. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, so it's like I'm educating as well, uh, keeping everything very healthy. But we, I'm telling you right now, we're one of the only raw bars in town mm -hmm. that has six varieties of oysters at all times. We always have local. What? 
Yes. But we have, you know, everywhere. Going. I mean, it's we're all over the spectrum. Get out of my head. Where do we find uh, crew? So crew, crew and Manje are located uh, at the Pythian Market. Ah. Uh, and that's uh, 234 Loyola. Yeah, that's here in the food court. Then. Yes. That is um, a super cool place. Right. Have you guys been there yet? Not, not yet. You've, really cool. you've got to come I've down. I've heard yes, something yeah. about it recently. Uh, you know, it's the food hall for all, and it has everything. I mean, great pizza, and, you know, beignets, yeah, and, right. and, you know, all those good things. Man. Wow. So you just, wait, you just got here at the right time. You just came to New Orleans for a bachelor party. I came for a bachelor party, had a drink, and I was like, oh, wait a minute. I'm opening so three businesses. So you, just, <laughs> so you just started. So Crunol and then Pule, is that at the Pythian as well? Uh, yes, so it you is. have two things at the Pythian. Two, two things under the same roof, which is great, but now uh, Crew is it's becoming a beast and its own entity. So and, I assume uh, that you're not actually down there at the Pythian market behind the counter oh, making oh, yes, food. I, oh, yes, I am. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, oh yes. Okay. I have a question I, I, for I Chef love, Marlin. I'd love to engage. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. So it's, it's folk knowledge here that they say don't eat oysters in months that don't have R in them. And you know why that is? Why is that? Well, hold on. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <It's about> refrigeration. <laughs> so, you know, look, here it gets very warm in August. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, it's, that's fine. And, but we still have locals in those months. And people come in all the time to order them. But I will say this, that, uh, you know, f from Canada and Seattle and all these great places that we get oysters in, uh, you know, they're, it's so much flavor and, you know, the texture and, you know, you, you got to come down and try it. Do you eat oysters, Cole? I love oysters. You do? Yeah, can you tell the difference between a Canadian oyster and a local no, oyster? No, I don't know that. Kind Canada, of stuff. I don't know if it tastes good. I, don't, I, don't. <laughs> do I you, can tell an uh, Apalachicola oyster from a New Orleans oyster. You can. Apalachicola. Yeah. Yeah. You'll okay. love it. And we have a They're fried smaller. We have a fried oyster as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and I try to put a different spin on it. So it's truffle mayo, fried mm -hmm. oyster, tuna tartare, and a black pepper caviar. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. I am so there. I don't even like oysters in that I think I'll go there right after here. We're going there together. Can you make the same kind of money here that you would make cooking for Christina Aguilera? Are you going to be happy doing this? Shocking. Uh, so, you know, and I, I won't say names, but uh, so I have, a, a names. I have a wedding that I just, uh, I just booked, and it's 400 people. Uh, we're charging $125 a person. So you tell me. What does that That's come to? Exactly. 400 so, times So you tell me. Was that 40,000? Forty bucks. Yeah, you or know what I mean. Four hundred thousand. No, no, no. Four, yeah, four. I'm really terrible. We're, 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 in, the, we're in the forty range, but you know <laughs> what I'm saying is the cost of living here is a lot less. True. So why would I go back to L.A.? I love you, L.A. Why would I go back to L.A. when you know there's other places to be? Yeah. And you so. can buy a million dollar home here, right? Which would cost twenty million. Well, a buddy in of LA. mine just bought a million dollar house in LA and it's a two bedroom. Uh, hello. <laughs> hello. Case in point. Yeah, but they do make a lot more money out there though. Uh they? yeah. Actually for me I was doing better in uh, Greenwich, Connecticut working for so you were a hedge fund owner. A, you were a, you were a private chef for a hedge a guy who run, owns a hedge fund. He owns fund. a hedge fund in so uh, this in the US. Sorry, in, in this guy's got a lot of money. Yeah. He lives eight, in eight, eighteen billion, I think it was the last time I counted. Wow, so he's one of the one percent. He oh he is so, the, he is the one percent. How <laughs> so I look through this um, resume of yours here that's you know our producer Graham gave me and there's all kinds of these incredible jobs you've had. Yeah. What, what I wondered was why do they come to an end? Um, you know, at some point, I mean, I had a great experience, you know, uh, working for Basama Ghanem, who owned the Gulf Bank of Kuwait, and you're traveling all over the world on a private plane and all that good stuff. But at some point, you want to do something to make your own mark and not be the guy behind the guy. You know what I mean? So yeah. uh, for me, I just felt that, and I, I, I said to my previous employer that, um, you know, I just need to go off and be the best version of myself that I can be. But you went from Christina to one to, you know, one of the, to the Kiss. You were working for Kiss. You were the chef for Kiss. Right. Four, so, four years with Kiss. Four one year, years. Yeah, four right. years with Kiss. Tour, touring everywhere, and I, you know, it was great. Right. But so how do these things come to an end? Do you get burned out, or do they get sick of the food you cook? Oh, or, no, 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 no. How, no. It, how, um, do, you, how I, do you end it? I, I always... I'll, I'll end it myself, and it's it sometimes... So you should uh, tell Rod Stewart, listen, Rod, I'm I going to New York. I, I, tell, I said, See you know you what? I'm going to New York. I was offered a job in New York, and I said I was going to New York. Um, there was a, a, a young lady. <clears throat> Hi, Christina. Um, <laughs> that it was almost like ending a relationship yeah. because I was like, you know, I'm going to, you know, I, yeah, it's not for me. 
But so Do they so offer you more money, like to stay? Yeah. Uh, more money, baby. More money. Okay, uh, like, no, we'll pay you yeah. like You've got to stay with yeah. me, uh, right? Yeah. They don't do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I was, yeah, yeah, a few yeah, times. they do it. Yeah. Okay. Did you but, have a manager or anything? No. I mean, it's, at this point, it's where, you know, I mean, when you're hanging out in the, the back, you know, you're hanging out in the back room or the, uh, the VIP room with all these people, you, you meet everyone. So it's pretty much like, oh, they, everyone wants to steal you from they the do. other person. They do. They're all trying to... Poach they want to poach each other. Yeah. No pun intended. Yeah. So what was it? <laughs> so you must have some pretty good stories about Kiss and Stevie Wonder and all these people and Christina Aguilera that you could really. But well, he won't. Uh, you know, write a book. Uh, yeah, well, I won't write a book. You could be the Omarosa of. Ooh. Well, it's nothing that juicy, cooking. I'm sure. <laughs> but people would snap it up. Everybody wants to know what Christina Aguilera was really like. Or, but the well, thing is, that's a know, professional. Right. Yeah, you never work I, again I, if yeah. you're No, no, no. I mean, you know, Christina is probably one of my one of my favorites, other than Paul, but um, Stanley. So, so you know. Paul Stanley from Kiss is. I, I I love Paul like nobody's business. All he's, right. he's an awesome person. What a funny gig. I Copy love you too, kids. Gene. What do they like to? <laughs> What do you have to do? I mean, they're on the road, or you're at their house. So they it don't was live together like the monkeys, or anything. Well, else. actually, they live down the street from each other. But um, it's uh, so basically, when you're on tour, you're doing like seven months out of the year. So seven months out of the year, I'm traveling around. The rest of the time, uh, you know, I'm in I'm in home. Okay, and that's what do you? So for five months, you're doing nothing. Um, Hanging out. Well, that's when you have time to drink. Yeah, yeah please. That's no. how it works. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. Cole, are he you is st- empty. Cole, are you still calling yourself the punk empress of African rock? Every single day. You still are. I look in the mirror. I'm yeah, like, okay. you're the punk empress of African yeah. rock. You're the punk empress of African rock. <laughs> Isn't that a great title? And then, and then I go out and do my things. Yeah. <laughs> like go to Walmart or whatever. So how's it all going? So I'm, I know you're on WWOZ on Tuesdays. Tuesdays, every you're Tuesday, the, 11 a.m. What time is it? 11 to 2? 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Yeah. yeah. I just had Irma Thomas on yesterday. Oh, that was oh, incredible. I'm so sorry. What do you oh, do? Is, she, re- like, she resembles my mother. When I first moved here, I saw all these billboards of her, and I was just like, have these flashes of like, that's yeah. weird. You look familiar. I was like, Mom? I was huh. like, Oh my God, that's Irma Thomas. Irma Thomas and looks like, like your mom. Yeah, she looks wow. like my mom. Hey, <laughs> look at that. There's a photo of Paul Stanley. Whoa! <laughs> Whoop! Must be a that's good me. photo. I swear I didn't, I didn't do that. It was me. Oh. That's, that's me, my boy. <laughs> yeah. He looks pretty oh, wow. good, actually, right. without his makeup on. He looks on. great. Yes, yeah. is he cinched? He's more handsome. What's that? Is he cinched in the face? He's cinched? Oh, you mean, is, do they have work done? No. That's a good thing no, about wearing all that makeup. I guess you don't need to have cinched. any work done. So, <laughs> I'm going to go get cinched tomorrow. Uh, yeah, yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. Are you having work done? You look great. <laughs> Thanks. I was cinched when I was born. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, good. So, Cole, what are, you, what are you doing musically? What's going on? Um, everything. So um, I still have my residency over on French at the Marini Brass on Saturdays. I'll be at Little Gem for the next couple of months. Um, subbing for Kermit Ruffins in his spot, but also doing some late nights over there. Um, I'm doing Down River Fest. Um, I just did the White Linen party at Old 77. So this is all Cole Williams' band? Or all Cole Williams' band, Cole Williams yeah. Band. So it's, it's like and a nice call, movement. Do you call that African rock? Yeah, the music we play is African rock. It's all original music. You know, I compose cool. it, I write it, I, I live it. I get some of the best musicians. It. I am the music. Right. And, um, I love that last song I heard. What was that called? I saw on SoundCloud. Is that free? Yes. Yeah, I wrote that with uh, in Paris with a friend of mine ah. in Paris, and that was yeah over okay, that so years ago. Okay, so far we've worked Portugal and Paris oh, into the conversation. Right. Paris. Danita, can you come up with some impressive place you've been? <laughs> well, can you I, and I did mention study uh, wig making and um, you know, uh, okay. wig uh, dressing in uh, Eastbourne, England, just in 2016. Ooh. So I did go okay. to Paris. They know about wigs over there. Yeah, man. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. I studied with an old school teacher. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was amazing. So wig making. Yes. What goes into it's, uh, what is that? It's, How do you even the start making The lace is so wig? thin, it's almost microscopic. Wow. It's um, about the size of the head of a pin, and you tie one hair at a time to each a uh, honeycomb-shaped hole. So wow. it's like a tapestry, like a, what's it called? Like needlepoint. It's like needlepoint. <laughs> With hair. With hair. One hair at a time. Don't it's they very have difficult little boys in India or something to do that? They go blind? Well, um, I'm sure there's some. I thought that was the, the whole thing. But the best ones come little... out of England and come out sorry, of, you know. are we talking about lady boys? I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> so there's actual... Wigs are in now, too. 
Who's, Everybody are they? Wigs. wigs are in. Oh my god, yeah. Is that right? Women with hair are wearing wigs. I don't know why. People are just wearing wigs. I must mm-hmm. be really uncomfortable. It up. <laughs> well, the fun a, part, part is uh, no. cutting I back. Not you know, on, I, I mean threw, in I general. Threw, I threw the wig away, yeah. Just mm-hmm. if I want to look different, like switch right. it up. Yeah, it but you can also cut sense. away the front of the wig and have your own hair in the front, you know, matching color, That's and then I've have got. the other wig. That's what you have. That's what I've got on now. That's <laughs> cord, is that, isn't that called <laughs> extensions? <laughs> it's beautiful. That's no, not extensions. It's It's like a half wig. So half wig. Because you have yeah. to sew in the extensions. Half wig. Yeah, extensions are okay. sewn in. Mm-hmm. So, Danita, here you mm-hmm. are. You're a successful hair person in movies. You've got a resume as long as my arm of all these movies you've worked on here in yeah, front of me. Yeah, long time. And you choose to take time off to go and learn how to make a wig. Absolutely. Why? And to learn... Um, Why would you want to do that? To put me a little bit ahead of everyone else. In the you wig know? department. In the wig department, when because wigs ahead, are extremely... When you say is that a pun? Or is it? it is a pun. Hey, look who's but calling. It's... Nicole Kelly is calling us. Nicole, oh, yeah. hi, Nicole, hi. What's she <laughs> up to? <laughs> no, she's in Atlanta. We're going to talk to her later. We're not talking to Nicole? Oh, okay, bye-bye. It gets deep. Because I All just right. went to Atlanta. <laughs> we you have had conversations. I'm glad you, you dropped that into the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> who is Nicole Kelly? Why aren't we talking she's, to her? Um, she's actually one of my oldest friends. Yeah? Yeah, we, um, we started in, in the music business together when I was 18. And... Um, We've been through like so much together. We had the same manager, we had the same vocal coach, and yeah, like she's one of the people that's known me the longest, like through all my transitions. Well, I'm glad we're not talking to her. Why? Uh, <laughs> why is she calling? She knows the dirt. Um, she's calling me back because I called her this morning. Ah, okay. I said something told me. Let me call Nicole. Just In, like the spirit. Just felt yeah, like I just it. have a feeling. Yeah, yeah. the feeling. Touches Do you have me. a lot of those kind of? Mm-hmm. Are you like a? Super, what's the word for it? Spiritual. Intuition. I, yeah, I a, I'm very intuitive. Clairvoyant. Clairvoyant. I'm a bit clairvoyant. Mm-hmm. Are you? Can yeah. you see the future? Um, it doesn't work like that. Oh, what's clairvoyance? Yeah. Is well, it talking to dead people? It's kind of. It's, it works differently for different people. Um, for me, I'm, I sense a lot of things. That's why I'm really careful about. What are you sensing about. now? What's going it's on? It's good energy here. Good. I don't sense anything. Okay. All right. Nothing negative. <laughs> but I can always thing. sense when something's off, and I just don't. Well, with the intuition, you don't need a reason why. Right. Like. Just to not feel to good, your own. you just like go with right. the feeling, and then you get the reason later. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and it's sometimes it's just an anticipation of something that might develop. Because I have this gift, which I consider it to be, okay. as well, and it's it's really good. She knows what it, you're thinking. It just, wow, right. You nervous? I can't read your mind, okay. but, but I can like look deep into too. your eyes and guess. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't take much. <laughs> so, what what sort of feelings do you have about work or about personal stuff or about your kids or you oh, knowing someone else is in oh, danger or what? God, my oh, what sort of feelings come to me? Yeah, what sort of stuff? Um, well, dreams are really uh, yeah. telling, I and tell a lot too. and I've had I had a dream the other night of my son who lives in New York, and he came to me as a little boy in the dream, and he just ran up to me and it was his old self as a child which he was extremely loving and you know he gave me the best hug in the world in the dream but now he's a grown gay man and he's not as you know i mean he's still a sparkly fabulous person um but he doesn't hug me as much of course he lives in Brooklyn. Okay, so, so we're doing a drag show this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> what, what he you, would totally be, you know, he'd what be are interested. You, what are you getting at, though? What, what, what's intuitive about that? That just seems like a okay, dream well, of anybody. Um, what would be intuitive, you know, the way I would look at it is I would want to uh, reach out to him and remind him of that spirit that he had as a child okay. and remind him. So it's a message. It's a message. Re- maybe let him know to, you know, to open up his heart. And he's about to go to um, Europe. He's going to Paris and Germany. He speaks um, about 15 languages. About 15? Wow. Are there 15 languages Roughly. out there? There are at least. speak English. I know. How I know. He, Fluently, he, is, he has translational what? degrees in four languages. Oh, my God. Um, and he's, he's not like using a, any of it. He's working he, at a Mexican restaurant well, called Piñata can use Spanish. or something. Huh? That's one language. Spanish, yeah. French, uh, German, um, and it, Italian. But he also speaks Japanese, Chinese, Vietnamese. I could go on Portuguese. You, oh my are you sure that's true? He just tells you that. Mom, no. guess what? I learned Chinese last <laughs> no, night. No, like I took him to the to the Nile, one, the Blue Nile one night. And you know how sometimes the, the, the group there or the attendees are all 
diff from different areas of the world. And thank you. And he, because um, I do talk to my hands. Yeah. That's all I do. Uh, and, I, and I'm turning around to, and I'm, you know, I'm seeing all these different languages being spoken. And I turn around to this Russian guy and he tells me he's from Russia. And I say, oh, that's the one language I think my son doesn't know. My son stepped up and started speaking to him in Russian. And I said, Okay. So what's wow, the deal? Is he, is he some kind of idiot savant? Uh, <laughs> he, sometimes he's an idiot, but he's definitely I mean, a savant when it comes to language. It's he crazy has, that you can speak for Well, minutes. the thing is, from a babyhood, I taught him, uh, well, my mother and father were deaf. So I taught him sign language. I don't know if that started it. Your mother and father were both deaf. Mm. Wow. wow. How'd they meet, actually? Well, actually, my, I, I take that back. My father was hearing, his mother and father were deaf, but my stepfather was deaf and blind. Does that? It's getting better and better. Hang yeah. on. <laughs> Your grandparents were both deaf? Yes. My father was hearing, his sister was deaf, my mother was deaf from I can't follow this. Are you a disease, a um, you know, uh, scarlet fever, and she became deaf at nine months old. What? Who? Wow. That's your so mom. So I, I speak I know, right? sign language so sign line. Okay. as quickly as I can spell. I, I can spell my name. Can you do this whole show in sign? I could do this entire show in sign language. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I could speak in sign language as quickly. So you can read lips? I can read lips. Oh, that's good to know. Because oh. my mother, yeah. <laughs> Hang My on. mother was great at that. So you were brought up in a so house she's, she's where she's not clairvoyant. She yeah, just right. really <laughs> 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 Very good. You That's really up, the truth. You were brought up in a house where both your parents were deaf. And the loudest house on the planet. I mean, my mother would cook, and pans would be smashing all over the place because. What years was you can't this? Sleep? Well, um, I wanted to put an age on you necessarily, but was this the sixties? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what kind of a sort of a wor world 70s? was it? Where, where was this? <laughs> where was this? Well, back then, I was always expected to, uh, oh, I always translated for my mother. But so where, if she went where, to get a loan at the bank, I would translate right. the did negotiations. You, did you grow up wow. quickly That's because of that? So did you yeah. have to become an adult? So yes. you knew what was going on from yeah. an early age? Mm -hmm. So I belong to a, an organization called CODA, which is Children of Deaf Adults, and they have had the same experience as I have. And it's really cool because I go there and I feel right at home. Like I'm not on the deaf side and I'm not on the hearing side. I'm in between with a bunch of other people. And are both your kids hearing normal? They are both um, have excellent hearing, except for my older son because he listens on the... Right. Headphones. Oh, well, that'll do he it has to you. burned his hearing yeah, out. Yeah, well, we've all got that. Yeah. But you, are you, you're not carrying some sort of I have, that? I have immaculate hearing. Like, I can hear all ambience. And every time they test my hearing, they, they like turn the machine off and say, wait a minute, <laughs> you heard that last notch? You know, I do. I have, I don't know why, but I do. Yeah. No, and on my father's this is side. Bunch. Yeah, yeah, that's so interesting. Isn't it? I don't know. My mother, what? see, lost her hearing through a disease, scarlet, but my, my scarlet fever, scarlet fever but my, scarlet fever anyway? it's like a Zero. sore throat with a red rash around your neck. They call it scarlet fever. The next thing you know, fever. you're deaf. Not Is always, but back in the day, it's a oh. virus with a Who's high calling? temperature. Oh, it might be Paul. Hold on one Is it Paul Stanley Let's talk Kiss? to Paul. <gasps> Is Hello? it Paul Stanley? You can just put it up to here and Hello? then you can all hear. Just hold it up. Somebody's basement on a ham radio. <laughs> What are you doing? What so, are you doing? I'm in, a, I'm in a recording studio. Oh, yeah? I, I saw your brother this morning. I know. I, I He told me. He sent me a, a text. I know. Yeah. I know. Uh, uh, I told, what's that? I told him uh, you're sending me photos of oysters. <laughs> that's, that's the first time anybody's ever sent me photos of oysters. Oh, that can't be the first time. So when are you coming to visit me in New Orleans? I don't know, but... Uh, you know, I love New Orleans, and I, you know, you're, you're the, the, uh, you're the, the master chef. So, I, I need to come there. I need to definitely make my way back and, uh, you, come up with you know, get, get some, get me some uh, crawfish and suck heads. And, you know. <laughs> and then we'll get you some seafood. Say hi to Grant. <laughs> Grant is actually uh, the, the, uh, the host here. The yeah, I don't know if you can hear me though. Can he not hear you? I yeah. don't know. I don't think so. I can so. hear you. Oh, he you can, can hear you. Yeah. Okay, Paul, how's it going? Are you coming to visit us? Uh, you know, I, look, I love New Orleans. We've been, uh, we were at Kings of Mardi Gras. We were the, uh, 
for Endymion. Yeah. I think it was last year, yeah. and uh, I think it's 79 when the, the police strike. So, you know, the, the coolest thing about yeah. New Orleans, other than the food, is that everybody always just finds an excuse to party. You know, it's either Mardi Gras or we're partying because it's leading up to Mardi Gras or we're partying because Mardi Gras just ended. Right. So or, it's all, or it's Wednesday afternoon. It's all very cool. Huh? <laughs> well, yeah. he said, or it's Wednesday afternoon, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. How cool. Are you guys recording? Are they working in the studio? These guys yeah, are always working. Yeah, we're in the studio right now doing some work and uh, mm. always something going on, but... How can I not take a call from you? <laughs> I appreciate you, um, and uh, let's let's uh, touch base soon, yeah? Yeah, I can't wait to uh, come down there, and I'm sure everybody who's uh, who's down frequenting your your establishment is uh, singing your praises. Uh, uh, God bless you, man. I, uh, you know how much I love you. I appreciate you calling. All right, man. You take care. All right. Bye. All right. See you. How about that? Paul, that was that really Paul Stanley from Kiss or just some guy uh, out here? Uh, that was Set Paul. <laughs> well, that's crazy. You can't tell his voice? I can yeah. Pick him up. I can pick him out of a lineup. That is yeah. wild. Wow. What do you think about that? I'm so impressed. I know. Me too. I'm speechless. And I'm never <laughs> speechless. <laughs> really? <laughs> Thanks, oh, Paul. No, not unless I don't like somebody. But, yeah, I'm usually always talking. <laughs> so, how did you, so, Janita, how did you learn to speak talking to speechless? Um, actually, I learned a little later in life, but I... You've made up for have it. no problem now. Right. <laughs> but I think that maybe I might articulate more articulate more than some people because, you know, it was very important to me to, to have a good speaking so, voice. What did your parents do when they, I mean, what's a deaf person do about listening to music? They maybe feel the vibrations. They can't listen to it, but they can certainly feel it. Right. My mother used to always buy a car with a great stereo for me. And uh, she let me play my music as loud as Wait, I wanted. How many cars did your mother buy you? My mother, no, her cars. Oh, oh okay, sorry. Her cars yeah. always had a neck. No, she never bought me a car. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to see if that. Paul would want to play something for us because I see you, um, you bought your tambourine. Yeah, I brought my tambourine. <gasps> cool. Yeah. I can sing a little something. You want to do something? <gasps> yeah, you know, Last time you came something. here, you brought your bongos. I know. I didn't feel like bringing my bongos because I have to right. lug them. Like, because I can't leave them in the heat, or else the oh, head they... will burst, and then oh, I have to wow. pick, like buy a new head and then. Ah, put but it back the on tambourine his... travels. Yeah. No problem. What do you write on? Do you write on piano or guitar? I write on piano. Um, sometimes awesome. I start with drums, like right. like percussion drums, or sometimes I just write it in my head. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So what are you thinking of uh, playing or coming with yourself on tambourine? You know. I've been uh, singing a lot of uh, spiritual songs in my set, so I've been like doing this medley of like my original tunes and um, some spiritual music that I grew up with in the church. So um, let me see. I feel like some Mahalia Jackson. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. yeah. Soon we'll be done. Troubles of the world Troubles of the world Oh, and troubles of the world Oh, soon it will be done Troubles of the world I'm going home Live, live with my God. 
sing it one more time. I'm going home, home to leave, leave with my, my God. Wow, beautiful. Wow. So what are you performing? <laughs> well, I'll be singing all over. What will you, so, you be singing, that girl? This, <laughs> this Saturday, I'll be at the Little Gem Saloon at 7:30 p.m. So Saloon. I'm at either Little Gem Saloon or Marini Brasserie, or I'm at I'm at the Rue Carré every first Friday. That's like yeah. that outdoor venue on Aretha yeah. Castle. Oh, yeah. cool. So uh -huh. I call it African Rock Church. It's African Rock music, but it's really music to inspire, um, music to uplift, and we just have church. Okay. You know, have your drinks. Question. Yes, please. Gym like emerald? Gem. Gem. Oh, gem. oh gem. like gem, like gem. working out. Gem. gem, G E M, like an emerald. Okay, go gem. Copy that. Got it's on, what is it? On Poitras and something? It's, yeah, it's on Poitras yeah. off of. Uh, it's a great little bar. I thought really? that little, actually. Yeah, it's right great. in the CBD. Are you upstairs in that room? Upstairs? I'll be downstairs yeah. in the sexy room. It's cool. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so it's great room you in, girls don't be the sexy room, don't you? Yeah. So that's it's always sexy. So those lyrics, I'm going home to live with God, that's about dying, basically. You know, I don't see it like like dying. You know, what do you I think. think I, well, I think, you know, we die many times in this life. You know, mm -hmm. we, like we transition into different careers. Mm -hmm. You know, different life paths. Like that's a death, right? You like you leave the old and you get something new. Christina Aguilera to kiss, <laughs> for example. Right to New Orleans. Right. Like, right. and then I, you know, when I'm singing it live, I sing going home to live with God, going going home to live with my man. You know, yeah. it's it's like it's really all one and the same. You know, you build a relationship with people, so it's like whatever God, whatever you, God you choose to, to to worship, whatever spirit you choose to worship, whatever name you call him, her, it. You know, we all are like pulled by something higher. So I respect. I try to respect that in the music. Okay. Yeah. Is that part of your intuition as well? Your spiritual. I'm sure. Yeah, I grew up in the church, means? but I was what, never religious. What does that mean? You grew up. How can you? How is that possible? We'll so I had my bed. Yeah, I had a bed in the, the church. And the <laughs> <laughs> I went to church like three days a week. Um, yeah, well, I went you, to church. But if you weren't religious, Wednesday, so you, didn't, you didn't believe any of it. My, my family's religious. But what did you think? I thought it was a load of shit. I thought it was boring. <laughs> I thought I was wasting my time. I had to get dressed up for no reason. Sit there, yeah. be quiet, read things so, I didn't understand. Hmm. Three days a and, week. And yeah, Wednesday night prayer meeting. Mm -hmm. We worshipped on Saturday, so we celebrated the Sabbath. What was that? Seventh Day Adventist. Seventh Day Adventist. Yeah. Jehovah Witness. Seventh Day. Seventh Day. Seventh day yeah. Adventist. What do they? Then, what do they believe in? Um, I call it like the Christian Jews, like the, the, the dietary Christian laws. Jews. You know, so yeah. I couldn't eat pork, right? web things with webbed feet. You know, like my mother still says, "Oh my God, you're eating shrimp." Like she doesn't eat seafood. Shrimp doesn't have any feet. Yeah, but no shelled fish. Right. You, right. Or do so. they have feet? Are they little feet, those things? <laughs> they call them like the... Um, the shellfish. The I shellfish are like the, the, the vermin of the, of the underwater. The bottom feeders. The bottom oh, feeders, yeah. yeah. Well, kosher, you can only eat fish with scales. Right, so that's what we... So it's the same as the Seventh-day Adventists. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. And then like Friday so night to Saturday night. It's the same thing. Sabbath is Saturday, like yeah. two days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so I couldn't do anything secular. On Saturday. On Friday night. On Friday night. Like, no secular right. phone conversations. Like, my secular friends, I couldn't talk to them. Oh, wow. It had to be all about, like, a church. Like, from See, zero the to... the joy of being Roman Catholic. 18. You know, you I, grew up Catholic? I went to church once a month. And, uh, <laughs> we were animals. We did anything we wanted to do. <laughs> did you have to dress up? I had to dress up. We it never dressed up to like, go to church. I wore, like, flip-flops and some shorts. Did Whoa. you? In church? Yeah. Really? Oh my god. Me? They would you would get so many looks oh, yeah. that they would look they would stare you out of the church. You'd be <laughs> so like, I'm so uncomfortable. <laughs> was there ever a point when you were a child that you believed it and it gave you some sort of comfort or you just always hated it? It's not that I hated it. I just didn't be, I don't believe in things to be so organized. I don't believe right. it's this mm -hmm. spiritual thing that they're teaching me on one hand, but on the other hand, there are all these rules and they're telling me how to believe in God mm -hmm. and they're not letting me build this relationship that they say I'm supposed to have with God. Mm -hmm. So I just didn't believe them. I thought like most of the people were full of crap. Right. I felt like they were phonies, you know, Is that they were like. Still in it? Yeah, she's still in it. My grandmother, she learned to read by reading the Bible. So the church is really big in my family, and it took a long time for them to understand like this way of life that like I right. choose my church. So mm -hmm. I think now they understand, like they know I'm a good person, 
but for years, many years, it was like, why do you have these tattoos? Like, my uncle, like, didn't invite well, me to his wedding at first. Because of the tattoos? He just doesn't understand me, you know? And so it's like, you know, he would ask me, so why do you have tattoos? Well, what's your answer? What is the answer to that? Because I feel like it. <laughs> okay. Well, that's fair enough. <laughs> Shut it go. down. What do they say? What does that one say on your chest? Well, this is um, carpe diem. Carpe diem. To remind seize me to day. seize the day. Yeah. And then I have the ankh. Mm-hmm. Right here. What is it like? Some, and I got this when I was on tour. So, like, I liked going on tour and getting tattoos. Like, in the, like a so, sailor. <laughs> yeah. So, I would think I was in Mississippi. Either Mississippi. No, I was in Memphis. After the show, got this. Had some really? Jameson. Yeah. So, you go after a show, you come. Because you, there was a tattoo parlor in the, in the right. event space. This so is then right I went in the middle of, for the people who can't see this, this is on your chest. Yeah. Right in the middle of your breasts. Like, it's pretty big as well. How big yeah. is that? Like, a, six inches? No, it's not that big. Oh. That's pretty big. It's like maybe like, three <laughs> inches. Call that six uh, inches. That's, that's what Rhodey's doing. <laughs> that's, what I call, in the hotel. that's what I call six um, inches. I think my back is like six inches. In, <laughs> <laughs> that's, in pretty, that's a pretty big tattoo My back is chest. six inches. That's well, I had like did, about an inch or something. They just did that impetuously after show one night in Memphis. Mm-hmm. I told them what I wanted. So right I, there. Yeah. In the middle of your chest. Mm-hmm. Wow. It hurt like hell. Mm. Yeah. And I have um, like La Revolution. La my oh, that looks cool. um, the revolution. Because I like the La way they say it in French. Revolution. You know, it makes you feel like you're really going to get up and do something. La Revolution. Uh, we, right. Where, like, like in America, speak it's like. Languages and you have like I speak a little on French. Your hand, no? I just see, like, a. What's this? Oh, oh I'm yeah. a Libra. Oh, there you go. Yeah. You're a Libra. What is it? I scales? Just got this the scales. One. This is. What you got? Uh, what have you got? Is that a dragonfly? Like a it's dragonfly. a dragonfly. And this scar right here is the curling iron burn from when I Whoa. did uh, the B-52s. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, right B- before a concert, um, I was doing her hair, but I didn't want her to know that I had just burned. Oh, oh my God. Ooh. So I didn't so say anything, Kate so Pitt? it became a, like a, hmm? You did Kate Pearson's hair? You did that? Cindy. Um, it's the blonde, Cindy. Cindy yeah. Wilson. Cindy. Cindy Wilson. So I, who- I did all these tiny little curls all over her, but I did Kate oh. before. I, I worked with them maybe three times. Yeah. When they, whenever they came to town, because Southern girls know how to tease hair. I'm baby. telling you, I'm telling you, I like Southern girls. Does Wait. Fred's voice sound like that in real life? That's his name, right, Fred? Fred Schneider or something. Yeah. Like can you, can you like see oh, oh, I only work with the girls. It's amazing how much we know about the B-52. Oh. Oh. Yeah, just Google that. Fred it's is really cool, um, but I only worked <laughs> right. with the women. <laughs> 1991, baby, that was the. Uh, he doesn't the have, um, you know, I he does his own hair. <laughs> <laughs> and you've done a lot of pretty amazing, impressive stuff here on this list. Look at all these movies. Mm. You did Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter, Imagination oh. Movers, TV series, mm-hmm. Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Yes. Oh. Ooh. Yes. So what do you Excellent. do on these things? Do you, are you? Are there a bunch of hairdressers? Sometimes, like on or the curious case of Benjamin Button, I was like the fourth, you know, position hairdresser. And what I would do is uh, I would make sure that all of the background hair, and we used many wigs on that show because it was it went through from 1915 uh, all the way up to 2004. So right. you've got to be able to do every period of look. And so we used was, a lot of wigs for the earlier. That was before you were a wig expert like you are now. That's where I began to become a wig expert. Okay. I, <laughs> so you have people, thank you. Because we've all been to the hairdresser. You sit in the hairdresser, and people tell you all sorts of stuff at the hairdresser. Do you do mm-hmm. a lot of counselling? If needed, you know we. But is it the same thing on a movie where people? Well, tell on you a movie, their life story? Um, my you know what I uh, feel like needs to happen inside of a trailer is that the actor should feel relaxed enough. To run their lines in their head, to to not you know if they don't want to talk, they don't right, have to talk. Right. Thank uh, you for or that. yeah, so sometimes like hairdressers want you to talk to them or mm-hmm. makeup artists, and I don't feel like talking. No. There's a way to you know to pick up the cue. You know, you you just you know start to work with them, maybe talk about what you're about to do, and then from there you take your cue from the person. You know, this make them feel get comfortable. Over and, over. and you know, honestly, <laughs> like if they're not talking to you, sometimes it's really because mm-hmm. they trust you. Because yeah. I know, if, like, if I'm talking my hairdresser mm-hmm. and my makeup artist hair, head off, mm-hmm. I'm trying to see what they're doing. <laughs> but mm-hmm. if I, like I trust right. you, I'm gonna be quiet. Yeah. So and like, when you do a movie, mm-hmm. how do you know what someone's hair is supposed to look like? Do you make that up? Well, no. Do you contribute um, that, or does it, the director tell you that? Or? The director, you confer with the director, um, the actor, you, the story, the period. It all depends on you know what it's about. Yeah, but whose decision? Do you have a creative input into it? Oh, absolutely. Do you say, I think, you know what, we look at on this character? So you have to read the script. I can say, look, oh, yeah, I read the script, I break it down, I break it down character by character. 
you know, what is the scene? What have they been doing? Were they running? Are they sweating? You know, all of those things. Should their hair be relaxed or should it be perfectly curled? You know, okay, all so of that. Okay, so where are we going next with hair fashion? Because now everyone's wearing this look like you, everyone's like got this hair. Like the two of us have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with it shaved on the sides, side yeah. and long on top. How and long have you well. had yours? Five years ago, nobody was wearing that. So I've had this for 10 years. You've got a I've sort been of shaving my, my head. The have size you? Of my, yeah. So I you're way it. ahead of that. Way yeah. ahead. So, so I'm confused. So it went, it went you're, from... You're shaved on the side? Just yeah, on one you. side? Let's take a look. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm actually growing back. So I used to shave both sides. Well, you're the person to ask if you've been doing this for 10 years, what are you doing next? Let's well, no, I'm going to have a spare oh, time. Oh, so like I have the blonde and <gasps> then... I love oh, it. Wait. So you do have blonde underneath and then one, si one whole side is blonde. Yeah, because blondes do have more sure. fun. But I just found more fun. Yeah. So I just do a little the tease and then, yeah, fun. if I do something kind of silly, it's like, oh, I'm blonde. <laughs> <laughs> it's to blonde me, like, excuse me. <laughs> oh, man, I didn't know I could use that excuse. Because oh, I'm a it's new blonde. I'm a newbie blonde. I've only been blonde you for about seven months. Have you? What did you Wait, do before? Months. Well, you had blue before. as well on your head. Oh, I've had Is blue, blue for green? ten years. Wait a minute. Well, oh, you were She's so ahead. Yeah. Brown. We're like trendsetters at this table. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, where are we going next after the head shaving on the side look? What's the next look that's coming in? I have to say that it's it's up to each person. Um, no, but it's not because suddenly we're set. all doing the same. You know, it's going to be a wash like, and set. I know, I know where <laughs> I'm going. Oh, wash and set would be that awesome come back? because that's gorgeous. Uh -huh. Washing you, and setting sure is gorgeous. I bet you in six is. months a wash yeah. and set. That's your wash mother's hairstyle. Your mother's right. hairstyle. When that's your mother when went you to the like hair dresser oh. and put the rollers in. Pin oh. curls. And you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if you see this. This is a pin curl right here. All right. This is what they're doing. Uh, in the 30s and 40s, yeah. right? Okay. So they would, you know, they would take the curl, make the curl, and then pin it. Mm -hmm. You know, and then it comes out like that. Ah, I used to have my hair like that too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I used to take tissue like to roll my hair. Yeah. Like if I didn't have rollers on the road, mm -hmm. I'd take like some paper towel and then like. See, I, w I wouldn't be surprised if people went back to, you know, pin curling their hair or, you know, that would be r very cool. It's like really extreme world. right now, like all yeah. the lime green. Everybody's like trying to outdo mm -hmm. each other, like with the cool with the factor colors. The cool and the colors. colors. Hmm. And Some I feel of like them are fails. Ultimate fails. Some of them are fails. Well, it has to be authentic, you know? Yeah. It's like yeah. you can tell like who feels it inside mm -hmm. and who's just like doing mm -hmm. it just to be cool. No. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to go back to roller sets. <laughs> Do you really believe that, or are you that. just kidding me? No, I totally believe that. that. I totally and I can't it. wait so that I can like have my hairstyle back. Because yeah. it went from like, why are you doing that to your hair, to like, well, that's really right. cool. Like, how right. did you do that? Yeah. I was like, oh, God. So what's your, <laughs> what would your natural hair look like if you didn't have shape on the side? and the It's really like curly and afro-y. And down so would here you shrinks. go back to that? I don't, it's a lot of maintenance, to be honest. Like, Is I don't it? feel like right. combing my hair every day. It would take about, like, 20 minutes yeah. to do my hair right. per day. Right. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of like to get up and go. So it's not good for you? No, it's not good for me. Set the... I'm kind of huh. used to, like, I'm still, like, on tour, even though I'm not on tour. Like, mm -hmm. I don't keep a full fridge. Once you're a roadie, you're always a roadie. Yeah, I, yeah my fridge <laughs> is never full. Like, I like to have my hairstyle in ways that I can just, like, kind of mm -hmm. go through, like, you know, a week or two weeks and not have to do it. Where are you living? In New Orleans? Yeah. <laughs> but what part, of the city, what part of the city are you in? I'm in the Seventh Ward. What does that mean? That's uh, near. That's near downtown. That's near Saint Claude. That's near Saint Bernard. That's near. Oh, so um, you're in the CBD, right? Mm -mm. Okay. No? Downtown. So it's, I'm closer to the quarter, like Elysian Fields. Mm -hmm. Seventh Ward. I never Seventh have Ward. Been able to figure out. Close that's near Treme. I get very confused with up and down there too. I, I get. Where are you living? Uh, so mm -hmm. I am. Um, what is that? I mean, like almost just outside of the quarter. So it's like, uh, what, 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 yeah. what bar do I, what can, bar can I throw at Stone What's the closest at? bar? <laughs> uh, I'm bar? like off of Elysian. Oh, okay. Right? So you're right es on. Espl 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 so you're in the Mariner. Yeah. You're yeah. in the Mariner. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Marin. so you're like right next to the seventh ward. Right. You're not your that far cute little hair, Danita. This is like pretty groovy like now. This <laughs> we love it. So you do your own hair, obviously, I assume, do you? You know, to a certain degree. That would be awesome if I could do my own hair well. <laughs> Who does your hair? Well, I, f I finally found someone. Mm -hmm. So I went to this guy. When I first moved out here. Danita will do it. I, can, do you do a faux hawk? I, I do. I went, when I first moved to town, I went to get my hair cut at this place. And I remember sitting there, and all of a sudden, I thought the barber went to the bathroom. He didn't go to the bathroom. The guy walked outside to go grab something to eat around the corner. Then he came uh -huh. back. While, while you're sitting in the chair. While I'm sitting in the chair. He came back and sat in front of me, eating his lunch. While I'm still waiting, and I said, you know what, I can't do this, I gotta go. 
Welcome to That's New Orleans. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? Even for New Orleans. I got to my hair braided by like in Harlem by the African hair braiders. Yeah. Like they would all take break at the same time. And then sometimes, like they would have like be, like eat their fish and then like start braiding yeah, their hair. You, and it's you, just you, you got to give uh, give a brother a heads up because I'm not patient like that. I'm telling you right now. You go into a place weird. you want to be waited exactly. on. Hello. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know. It's wanna, just a wanna, professional thing. You want to drop some names? You want to name drop? Where did, what establishment <laughs> did you go to? Oh, oh hell to the no. Oh, hell to the no. I won't even say. <laughs> But it was bad, so I never went back. The name but is Hell to the Nut. Hell to the Nut. <laughs> okay, so That's the name of it. Janita, do you have a movie coming out that we can all go and see and say, oh, we know the person who did the hair? Okay, well, I, I have a film coming out at the Toronto Film Festival called Out of Blue with Patricia Clarkson, our, you know, our native love. Yes. yes. Is she related we filmed to Kelly it here. Clarkson? I don't know who that is. <laughs> So. Jackie Clark's, Clarkson, who is a uh, political figure here, oh. or was, and, and she's uh, she's the mother of Patricia Clarkson. Oh. Um, but I am starting a movie next week. I go to Pittsburgh to work on a film uh, about the sl- a slice of life of Fred Rogers' life, Mr. Rogers. And, You're working and, on the Mr. Uh, Rogers movie. I am, and, yeah. and and Mr. Rogers is being played by Tom Hanks, so it's oh, wow. yeah, that's it's gonna going be to be a big very deal. fun. <laughs> it, well, the thing about it is that it's right. it's it's about kindness. So. And it's called you know, kindness. It's called the neighborhood something or other. I'm ready to see. No, that. it's called. You are my friend. Oh, you are my friend. That, that can be creepy. That's very right. creepy. <laughs> and then I like, like your expression, Carl. Like you're going to throw up there for a minute. Yeah, and then yeah. like invite you into the no, car. You, you are my, my friend. friend. Get into my car. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what a, would you like some candy? <laughs> That's I've, I've offered wh- that before. I thought there was. A, was Do you want to wear my cardigan? Is it the documentary down down by the neighborhood river? thing? Hmm? Or something? Maybe there's a documentary about him called. There is. There is. That's a different thing altogether. Okay. So this is a Mr. Rogers biopic. No, it is not a biopic. What is it? It is a slice of what his kindness did for someone. And that's all I can tell you. Can I give a tidbit of a backstory here? Okay. So uh, in Hollywood, there's this thing called the Playboy Jazz Fest. (gasps) I want to go. And it was awesome. At the Hollywood Bowl. At the Hollywood Bowl. And the first time I ever went, I went with my mother. Uh, we had a, a she was a bunny well no she's a she's a talent manager in Los Angeles ah. uh, so she goes to a lot of you know premieres and different things like that so right. we we went to the Playboy Jazz Fest and it was on stage Bill Cosby and <gasps> uh, wait a minute the story gets better uh, it was Bill Cosby and Hugh Hefner and I said to my mother I said I don't understand why Hugh Hefner and Bill Cosby are like friends <clears throat> <clears throat> Um, but j- to to go back, uh, one of Bill Cosby's best friends, Mr. Rogers. Thank you, my dear. One of Bill Cosby's best, best friends, friends was Mr. Yeah, Rogers. Was Mr. Really? Rogers? Oh God, yeah. Okay, that's an interesting. It is. Tidbit to wrap up on. He never hung out with Sidney Poitier. It Somebody was just walked over Cosby. here out of from the bar and brought you a beer. Do you know that? Person? I never ask questions when people bring me drinks. Interesting thing, wasn't it? Did you see that? <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah. How did, how did that person even know you wanted I, a beer? I, 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 I always, who, I always want a beer. You text her. <laughs> Do you get bought a beer every day at the same time? <laughs> you guys are going to have to get the it's hell sweet. out of here. This uh, has been awesome. This, I, this I, hour, like, this has been a very quick hour. A joy meeting both all of you. All I know. Of you. Can we do like an alumni? Um, you want to come back? It's New Orleans with like all three sure. of us. Yeah. You want to come back? Where are you again? now? We'd like love where to. Are you one now? year from today. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Pinky swear. Let's do it. There you go. Pinky swear. Definitely. Okay. August oh my 29th. Hang on, I gotta do it. My other hand. I feel like okay. we're making one year with the devil. Oh, it's a Katrina <laughs> anniversary. <laughs> oh, so that's right. Worst day of the year. It was. Was it yesterday okay. or today? Wait, what's today? Today. Today. Oh, today. Today. Twenty ninth. Twenty ninth. Trust me, I know. Yeah, wow. yeah. it's the absolute wow. worst day of the year. I'm glad wow. I got to spend it with you guys. Birthday. Actually, oh, that's right. I know. It's been a horrible memory yeah. for most no, people. No, we don't want to. Yeah. Hey, listen. Just before we get out of here, I'll just tell you one thing. Happy hour is brought to us today by Strategic Resumes. If you want to sharpen up your resume or your LinkedIn profile, if you're looking for a job and you need a hand, get in touch with Grant Cooper at Strategic Resumes. And if you want to get out of town, this is good for all three of you guys. Mm-hmm. If you want to get away, you can start your search by checking with Travel Central and Metairie. It's kind of like going on kayak or Expedia, except it's someone else doing it for you. Totally cool. It's like a rich person. I'm in ho- uh, hospitality, so there is no yeah. time for me to get away. I'm, exact- I'm always yeah, working. Well, you I, were in I can Portugal. in between projects. Yeah, I okay. Was so before this all check started. it out with Travel Central and Mary. If you're looking for a full uh, swimsuit or a cover-up or oh. yoga clothes 
or lingerie, yeah. check out Basic Swimming Gym and Basics underneath mm -hmm. the lingerie store on Magazine Street near Jefferson Avenue. And Ooh. thank you to the Hangover Destroyer, who are the only all-natural product medically proven to prevent a hangover. You can go to hdestroyer.com and write happy hour on the coupon code, and you too can get 30% off of your first order. Oh, heck Hangover yeah. Destroyer. Yes. Might need it one and day. And seize you the door. And thank you to the Positive Vibrations Foundation. Thank who you, create, Positive Vibrations. Yes, and encourage love, community through the development and preservation of arts, music, culture, and heritage. If you'd like to be a part of our Patreon family, go to patreon.com and search for It's New Orleans Happy Hour. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can be a part of our Happy Hour family and get all sorts of incredible things, including being invited on the show. I could be a awesome. Patreon. You could do oh, it. And I just want to plug ColeWilliamsMusic.com. Yeah. ColeWilliamsMusic.com. We'll okay, have a link hold, to that. Hold on. i got to get a shameless yes, plug also. Okay. So this Saturday at the Pythia Market and crew, mm -hmm. uh, we are having a drag show brunch. And we it's it's Decadence awesome. Weekend. Oh, yes. Decadence. Every, every, yes. Everyone come on down See, and enjoy. Down, it's always something. Yeah. That's, that's right. It's always weeks. something. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Okay, that's at the Pythia Market. Market we can find. Do you want to go and see Chef Marlon Alexander? And he's down there himself. Come see me at Little Gem Saloon at 7.30. So go to Pythia Market. Cole Williams and the Cole Williams Band. Come check you. Yeah. And I'm going and your place yes. first, and then your place. It's called we just going to make a Labor Day Caravan weekend. of Love, and we can all make Caravan it happen. Caravan of Love. Caravan of Love. <laughs> so thank you very much, <laughs> Chef Marlon Alexander, Cole Williams, and Danita <laughs> Miller-Sather. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yes. For being here, that's been Happy Hour for another week. The producer of our show is Graham DuPonte. Our music producers are Christian Unruh and Monique Pyle. Thomas Walsh is our technical director. Asher Griffith is the Facebook Live director who put this whole thing on Facebook Live, where if you haven't seen it, you can go see it on our It's New Orleans Facebook page. Andrew Searock is our fact checker and social media connector. And the theme music that you're currently listening to was written by and is being played by Mitch Foreman. If you'd like to be on our show, you can drop us a line. Our address is on our website, itsneworleans.com, where you can check out many other hours of happy hour that we've made previous to this one, as well as other shows we make here, including Out to Lunch with Peter Rusciutti, live from Commander's Palace, Louisiana Eats with Poppy Tooker, and our award-winning podcast about death called Death the Podcast. You can also find other great Louisiana podcasts at itsacadiana.com and itsbatonrouge.la. You can keep up with us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and a bunch of other time-sucking social media as well. And all of it we're called It's New Orleans. You can find photos from the show on itsneworleans.com and on our It's New Orleans Facebook page. These photos were taken today by...